As a combined bomber offensive progressed, the threat to bombers shifted from fighters to flak. The intent of this video is to review the effect bomber altitude had on the flak threat. This is the channel's seventh video that addresses topics related to German flak. The videos are located in the channel's flak playlist. This page from a declassified August 1945 headquarters AAF intelligence report titled Flak Neutralization outlines steps formations can take to reduce the flak threat. Item C lists bombers flying at an optimum altitude of attack. The altitude selected is based on a trade-off between bombing accuracy and bomber losses. This page from a 1945 AAF Evaluation Board European Theater of Operations document titled Black Defenses of Strategic Targets in Southern Germany lists factors which led to Germany's inability to stop the strategic bombing campaign by flak. High altitude bombing, saturation of flak defenses, and radar countermeasures. Attacking at high altitude is one of the three significant steps bombers took to reduce the flak threat. The optimum bombing altitude is defined on this page from a September 1945 SINPAC bulletin titled Flak Intelligence Memorandum No. 9. Bombers should attack the target at the optimum altitude. Bombing efficiency is defined as the number of bombs striking the target divided by the number of bombers lost and or damaged. The bombing altitude will be selected to maximize this value. The mission will be most efficient when more bombs are delivered on target with minimum losses. Bomber loss rates from flak are strongly dependent on the attack altitude. This page from a June 1945 SINPAC document titled Flak Intelligence Course for Air Combat Intelligence Officers aligns the rules of thumb regarding the relationship between bomber altitude and flak's effectiveness. Heavy AA flak guns are most effective at altitudes around 7,500 feet. Heavy flak guns are defined as 75 mm caliber size and up. The projectiles are time fused, have a slow rate of fire, no tracers, and cause damage by burst fragmentation. The Germans developed various caliber sizes of heavy flak guns as shown on these images. Around 70% of the guns were the 88 mm caliber size and will be the focus of this video. Flak gun effectiveness decreases by half for every 5,000 foot increase in altitude between 15,000 and 30,000 feet. This key rule is also shown on this page from a 1945 Army Air Forces Evaluation Board document titled 8th Air Force Tactical Development. Attacking targets at low altitude is dangerous. When bombers attacked at altitudes around 8,000 feet, 100% of the bombers suffered battle damage. A rule of thumb is that flak strikes are cut in half for every 5,000 foot increase in bomber altitude. Losses from flak decrease with increasing altitude. The higher, the fewer. The bombing altitude selected must consider a balance between bomb accuracy and flak's effectiveness. The rule is fly at the highest altitude practical consistent with desired bomb accuracy. This page from a 1945 Headquarters 8th Air Forces document titled Report on Bomb Accuracy 8th Air Forces shows how bomb accuracy trends with altitude. Bombing altitude is a strong predictor of bomb accuracy. This table outlines the percentage of bombs that fell within 500 or 1,000 feet of the aim point for the B-17 or B-24 bombing platforms. The data was collected in 1944. The key takeaway trend is that bomb accuracy decreases with increasing altitude. Per 8th Air Force doctrine, if 50% of the bombs fell within 1,000 feet of the aim point, bombing accuracy is considered excellent, and less than 15% unsatisfactory. B-17 should provide excellent bombing results at bombing altitudes below 18,000 feet. No excellent bomb accuracy is shown for the B-24 platforms. This image represents components and integration of a German flak battery from a May 1945 Headquarters, United States Army 9th Air Force's document titled Flak Facts. The B-17 bombers approach here and are at altitudes between 20 and 30,000 feet. The small Würzburg radar and or optical directors pick up the formations out to 25 miles. The director is fed the formation slant range, azimuth, and elevation. The director crunches this data to estimate the bomber's future position in the sky. The batteries are relayed the flak gun's quadrant elevation, azimuth, and fuse setting. The quadrant elevation is defined on this graphic from a 1942 War Department document titled Coast Artillery Field Manual. Quadrant elevation is essentially the barrel's elevation angle. 
This image shows a location of the 88mm flat gun's elevation quadrant scale from a June 1943 War Department manual titled German 88mm Anti-Aircraft Material. The gun's elevation can be set to minus 3 to plus 85 degrees. This chart from a 1943 British War Office document titled Enemy Weapons, German Infantry, Heavy AA, and Divisional Artillery shows the ballistic characteristics of the German 88mm projectile. The x-axis is a horizontal distance from 0 to 15,000 meters. The y-axis is a vertical distance from 0 to 11,000 meters. The solid lines are the 88mm projectile's trajectory based on the gun's elevation angle. For example, if the gun's barrel is elevated to a 50 degree quadrant angle, the projectile will follow this path. There are limitations to the trajectories shown. The maximum elevation of the guns is limited to 85 degrees. The minimum elevation permitted was 200 mils or 11.25 degrees. As discussed in this 1945 Headquarters United States Strategic Air Forces in Europe document titled Minutes of Flat Conference. This minimum elevation is required to reduce ground structural damage or civilian casualties in urban areas. An 11 degree quadrant elevation projectile will follow this path. This creates dead zones in these shaded areas. The projectile's fuse time can be set up to but no more than 30 seconds and for safety cannot be set below 2 seconds. The projectile's effective time of flight is constrained between 2 and 30 seconds. Another 88mm caliber flat gun limitation is listed on this page from a 1943 military intelligence service document titled Tactical Trends. The ceiling height equates to around 26,000 feet. The 88mm caliber flat gun struggles to engage targets at altitudes greater than 26,000 feet. This premise is reinforced on this page from the reference shown earlier. High altitude 88mm flak engagements above 26,000 feet were not effective. The trajectory curve can be constrained by this altitude. From all these five constraints, we can bound the 88mm projectile's effective zone. Heavy bomber attack altitudes are listed on this page from a September 1944 Air Surgeon's Office document titled Aviation Physiologist Bulletin. Depending on the year, the average altitude of bombing missions varied between 20 and 28,000 feet. Maximum altitudes are listed on this table and can go beyond 32,000 feet. I spot checked the 100th Bomb Group's bombing altitudes for December 1944 and March 1945 missions. Based on this operational data, most 8th Air Force's B-17 missions generally attack the targets within an altitude band of 20 to 30,000 feet. We can bound the 88mm real-life heavy bomber effective zone in the area shaded. The zone is constrained by a 20,000-foot operational minimum altitude, 30-second projectile time of flight, 26,000 effective 88mm projectile ceiling, and the gun's 85 degree maximum quadrant elevation angle. The real life effective zone is quite a bit smaller than the projectile's full trajectory. Now let's compare the flat gun's effectiveness for attacking formations at 20 and 26,000 feet. The small Wurzburg radar picks up and starts tracking the formations at 25 miles out, flying at an altitude of 20,000 feet. A ballistic solution will need to be solved such that the projectile and plane will meet at this point. The projectile will take this path when fired from a gun with a quadrant elevation set to 47 degrees and a fuse duration of 30 seconds. The fuse will detonate the projectile a horizontal distance of 8,400 meters or 5.2 miles from the gun battery. This is a practical horizontal combat range of the 88 millimeter gun. The B-17's formation indicated airspeed to and from the target equates to 155 miles per hour. The formation's true airspeed is roughly 211 miles per hour. During the 30-second projectile's time of flight, the bomber will have covered 1.76 miles. This implies flat guns will open fire when the formation is 6.96 horizontal miles from the guns. So the projectile and bomber will meet in 30 seconds. The formations will be under continuous fire until it reaches a dead zone above the flat guns. This distance equates to 8,000 meters or 4.97 miles. It will take the bombers 85 seconds to traverse this zone. Since the 88 millimeter flat gun's practical rate of fire is around 14 rounds per minute, as defined on this 1945 ADI report titled German Flak, each flat gun can fire 20 rounds during this 85 seconds of exposure. 
we can calculate the same values for a formation traveling at 26,000 feet. The results are tabulated within the spreadsheet, where the rows are the formations flying at altitudes of 20 and 26,000 feet. The number of shells fired at the formations attacking at 20,000 feet is 53% more than at 26,000 feet. This is due to two factors. The reduction in flak exposure distance from 4.97 miles at 20,000 feet to 3.54 miles at 26,000 feet. The bomber's true air speed increased from 211 to 233 miles per hour at higher altitude, even though both formations are flying at an indicated air speed of 155 miles per hour. The duration of flak exposure is less when flying at a higher true air speed. This study does not take into account the increase in projectile dispersion that occurs at higher altitude, which affects flak accuracy. If the bombers flew at 27,000 feet, the formations will be out of the 88 mm gun's effective range, so why not just bomb from 27,000 feet? This page somewhat addresses the issue from an April 1945 21st Bomber Command Air Intelligence Report. Sometimes the altitude selected is below the optimum altitude to make sure a high priority target is destroyed, or in other words, a high bomber loss rate is tolerated when evaluated against target destruction. Bomber specialists recommend crews not attack targets at higher altitudes than optimum altitude prescribed, unless weather forces the formations to a higher altitude. It is a policy of the 8th Air Forces for bombers to attack lightly defended targets at lower altitudes and highly defended targets at higher altitudes. Although the focus of this video is on optimum bombing altitudes over the Reich, this table unpacks the sensitivity of Japanese flak accuracy to altitude from a March 1945 21st Bomber Command Air Intelligence Report. The study is based on a B-29 bomber attacked by Japanese 120mm flak guns. The columns represent the bombing altitude, true airspeed, gun's horizontal range, and high altitude flak effectiveness relative to 10,000 feet. Flak effectiveness is 13% at 30,000 feet as to 10,000 feet. The results of the study are consistent with both RAF and 8th Air Force's published results. This is the first time I've seen the 8th Air Force's referred to as the 8th Bomber Command. Let's take a look at a video graphically explaining these concepts. Bombing missions are planned for high altitudes whenever possible because above 15,000 feet anti-aircraft effectiveness decreases. Flak is quite accurate at 15,000 feet, but it becomes less accurate with altitude. So that at 20,000 feet it is only one half as accurate as it was at 15,000 feet. At 25,000 feet its accuracy is again reduced by one half. At 30,000 feet, accuracy again is cut in half. In general, flak accuracy is reduced by one half for every 5,000 feet increase in altitude. If you've enjoyed this flak sensitivity to altitude deep dive review, please consider engaging with the video by commenting, liking, and or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.